Good evening, everybody. Hello. It's great to have you all here tonight. I'm glad everyone who's here can make it. At this time, I'll ask that you pull out your hymn books and stand if you're able as we sing our course of the month, 35. 35? 35. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. All right. Our next hymn will be 131, the Star Spangled Banner. 131. We'll sing only the first verse. Hmm? Only the first verse. Okay. We'll sing. Yeah, we'll sing only the first verse. Last one. Right. Oh, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes. And bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched, was so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Come in. All right. Now we will have Welcome in Prayer by Pastor Storm. Amen. Well, it's good to have everybody here tonight. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this veterans holiday, Lord. We just thank you that for all of our servicemen and women who have served their country so proudly. We just thank you and praise you for them. We just thank you now for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity of coming into your presence one more time. Father, we just pray now that you'll guide and direct us in all that we do and say tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn will be 129. 129. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, 129. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is traveling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Bust you. I have seen him in the watch trials of a hundred circling camp. They have builded him an altar the, the evening dew and damp. I can read his righteous sentence by the time and now he clamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His day is marching on. Vosphor. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
while God is marching on. Hey, man. Hey, great singing tonight. Good job so far, guys. Yeah. And now it is time for phrases. And I want to like to share. Uh, this, okay, uh, so it's, cool. uh, it's basically, basically yes, uh, wait, yes, sir? Hey, man. Marching. Marching on. Thanks. Hey, man. I'm pretty excited, but uh, actually, we, we, uh, would anyone like to go next, actually? Thanks. Uh, if not, I have one I would like to share. Uh, we're already on the fifth week, we're already on the fifth, wait, fifth week, yeah, there's the fifth week of school, like this, like thi this week, and then next week, is, next week is Thanksgiving break? Next week is Thanksgiving break? Next week? Yeah. Okay, next, so, okay, so this is the fifth week of school, and then we'll be on Thanksgiving break. So, praise the Lord for that. That's exciting. Yeah. Who would like to go next? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to thank you, man, for the inspiration to write some very good songs. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. It's always wonderful when they respond. Amen. Who would like to get out with anyone else like to share? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he does. Amen. Thanks. Did anyone else? Thanks. If not, then at this time we will have announcement. Wait. Yeah, announcements by Pastor Storm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm. I am so thankful. I live in a free country. Amen. Amen. And it's because of some of you men and women that I live in a free country, and I cannot thank you enough for all of the many sacrifices that you gave, and many have given the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we do have, and I just thank you so very much for that. Uh, we've got Sunday school at 9 o'clock. We've got our Sunday morning worship at 10. Uh, we've got uh, Sunday evening, our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study at 6 o'clock, food bank Friday at 9 o'clock, and then Saturday bus calling and soul winning at 9 a.m. Uh, this coming Wednesday night will be question and answer um, on <clears throat> the, um, wait a minute, let's see, I think I'm a little bit behind here, hang on, what's the date today, 10th, there we go, um, let's go back here, let's rewind, I got the wrong announcements, there we go, <clears throat> I'm thinking to myself, a lot of this stuff we did yesterday, all right, here we go, 13th, we got question and answer, that uh, 16th is men's fishing trip, we've got about 12 guys going, <laughs> I mean, that's going to be great. I can hardly wait. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I can hardly wait to uh, get out there and, and catch the big ones and then come back and we'll have a fish fry, you know what I mean? And uh, so then also the ladies are going to have fellowship at my house on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Um, the 22nd is tug. The uh, 22nd through the 30th is school break for uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, the 24th is Noisy Bucket. The 27th is our Thanksgiving Eve service. And then also the 28th will be Thanksgiving Day. Uh, then <clears throat> December this uh, 2nd, uh, we'll be back to school. The 4th will be question and answer of December. Uh, December 7th will be, uh, uh, we have a fun shoot down at uh, Tucson. Uh, 13th is um, Tug Christmas Party. The 14th is Men's Breakfast. 14th is also Ladies um, Fellowship. Uh, December 21st is trap and skeet practice. The 20, uh, 21st is trap and skeet practice. The 24th is our Christmas Eve service and happy birthday, Jesus. And you'll know more about that as we get into December. And then on the 25th is Christmas Day. And the 29th is Noisy Bucket. So we've got a lot of things happening, a lot of things coming up and going on. So just mark your calendars and be here when you can. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to a good night tonight. Amen. Now it is time for our course of the month, 22. Please stand for your able as we sing 22. Please stand 22. Close off the brother's hand. Close off the brother's hand. Close off the brother's hand. Okay. Only uh, the fast boss. Right. 22. Yes, sir. 22. Sorry. Right. Well, only, only the fast boss. 
Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Say hi to everyone. One more time. Christ, sorry, Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Amen. Now it's time for last song before the message. One twenty-seven. One twenty-seven. One twenty-seven. One twenty-seven. Our last, our last hymn of tonight before before the message. I'll we'll sing verses one, two, and four. One twenty-seven. One two seven. Sorry about that. Alright. All right. We'll sing verses one, two, and four. Ready? Begin. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for far, for mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Verse 2. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stemming fashion stress. Hath a fair for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God man thine every flower. Confirm thy soul in self 
control thy liberty in love us for O oh, beautiful for a patriot dream that sees beyond the years thine alabaster city's gleam undimmed by human idiots America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Amen. And now we will have a message by Pastor Swan. With this being Labor Day, or I'm sorry, Veterans Day, it was one of them anyway. And, uh, I got to thinking about the greatest sacrifice that was ever made, and that was Lord Jesus Christ making a sacrifice on the cross. And as I got to thinking about that, I thought, what better time to do the Lord's Supper than on Labor Day, or on uh, Veterans Weekend? You know, not only does do we celebrate those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom, but we also need to take and remember the one that paid the ultimate price for our salvation. And uh, I thought tonight would be a great night to take and do the Lord's Supper. And uh, I've got a message on the Lord's Supper tonight. And uh, so if you want to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, <clears throat> i got one verse I'm going to read, but we're going to read more of it as we get down through it. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Two, three, you add me off? All right, let's do it again. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. I just pray now that we might get something out of this that we can use in our own life. And Father, we know that you paid the ultimate sacrifice that we can have eternal life. And I just thank you and I just praise you for it. And I just Pray now that you'll guide and direct in this message, that we might get something out of it, and we'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I want to take a look tonight at the subject of the Lord's Supper. You know, I truly believe that there are those <clears throat> uh, in the church and who are watching, believe it or not, uh, who, don't, who misunderstand or do not understand fully the Lord's Supper. Uh, you know, <clears throat> the Lord's Supper is something that was given to, to the church as one of the ordinances. There were two ordinances given to the church. They were what? Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Those are the two ordinances that were given to the local New Testament church. <clears throat> what we need to realize is that baptism is a picture of what Christ did for us on the cross. As you stand in the water, it represents his death. As you go underneath the water, it represents his burial. And as you come out of the water, it represents his his uh, resurrection. And the Lord's Supper, it represents his broken body and the blood which was shed for our sins. Um, so what we need to realize is that there's um, um, the two ordinances that were given to the local New Testament church need to be practiced by the New Testament church. You know, different churches believe different ways. Uh, some believe <clears throat> that there should be an open... <clears throat> Lord's Supper. What that means is that anybody who walks through the door uh, should be able to take and participate in the Lord's Supper. I don't believe that. And I'm going to show you why as we go through this a little bit. Um, but then there's some like myself that believe in what's known as close Lord's Supper. What that means is that if a person's been saved, baptized, 
you should be able to partake in the Lord's Supper. We have a lot of snowbirds that come in. You saw a lot of them this morning in church. And there's a lot of them that come from other states. They belong to a good, independent Baptist church somewhere else. They've been saved, baptized, but they're not a member of this church. But yet they want to participate in the Lord's Supper. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I see nothing in the Bible that says that they shouldn't be able to. Now, there's other churches, though, and I know of pastors that, that uh, teach this and, and believe this way, is that uh, they have what's known as a closed Lord's Supper. What that means is that if you're not a member of that church, you cannot participate in the Lord's Supper. You cannot participate in any part of the Lord's Supper. You have to be a member of that church in order to take and participate in the Lord's Supper. Uh, in fact, they have it on a separate night, uh, different from any other night that they have church, and uh, they'll have the Lord's Supper, and they have the membership roll at the door as you walk in to make sure you're in that book, and if you're not, then you're not allowed in for the Lord's Supper. And, um, but I'm not that way. I believe in close Lord's Supper, and that's the way I was brought up, and uh, I don't see anything in the Bible that says that, that uh, closed Lord's Supper is the way you have to have it. But I want to go through from the beginning and look at where it all started and how uh, it needs to be administered and who should be able to partake in it. Uh, I think these are some very important things. And I, I, I mean, some of you have heard this before, but, you know, I think we all need a refresher course once in a while. Amen. Because um, from time to time, we forget about what the Bible says about certain areas. And you know me well enough that um, I'm going to preach from the Bible and what the Bible says and uh, go from there. But <clears throat> where did it all get started? In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26, it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. In Mark chapter 14, verse 22, it says, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body. In Luke chapter 22, and verse 17, it says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, This is, uh, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. You know, as we see, the Lord's Supper is found in all of the Gospels except one. And that's the book, excuse me, that's the book of John. And it's also found in the book of 1 Corinthians, which we're going to be looking at here in just a little bit. But the first Lord's Supper was held the night of the evening meal. And when we, it, it's very important, um, but it was, it was held... Um, at night, uh, and that was when it first started, was at night. It wasn't held during the daytime. It wasn't held, you know, some other time. It was held in the evening or at night. Uh, in uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, it says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached un uh, unto them, um, ready to depart the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And so here we see that the Lord's Supper was given at night, even here. Um, uh, they were uh, having the Lord's Supper. Uh, they were gathered together for the evening service, you know, much like we're doing right now. It, and, uh, um, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, I'd have a hard time sitting and listening to somebody preach from 6 o'clock at night until midnight. Six hours. You know, I mean, I, I would have a hard time doing that. But apparently, Paul was that type of preacher that they could take and sit and listen for six hours. And, um, um, you know, one of the guys fell asleep in the window, second story window, fell out, and he died. And Paul went over and, and raised him from the dead. But, um, you know, notice also, they were gathered together on the first day of the week. You know, this was not the Sabbath day. This was the first day of the week. This was not Saturday, it was Sunday. It was the first day of the week when they, were, uh, when they all were together, and uh, that's when they were worshiping, was on Sunday, not on Saturday. Uh, this is <clears throat> one of the reasons that 
uh, we in this church um, have Sunday service rather than Saturday is because the early church started their church services on Saturday. Uh, you know, not only did the Lord um, have the Lord's Supper the e in the evening, but even after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and, um, and, and from there on, they had the Lord's Supper in the evening. Um, so what, what we need to realize is that the Lord's Supper was started by the Lord <clears throat> uh, just before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, just before he was taken uh, for, um, to be crucified. Um, <clears throat> now, we also need to realize that it continued to be held in the evening many years after that. Now, there's many that, that say, well, the reason they did that was so that the Jews didn't know what they were doing and they wouldn't come in and, and persecute them. Well, that could be part of it, but <clears throat> I believe that it was started in the evening by the Lord, and I believe the disciples continued to uh, do it that way. Now, in, um, but, <clears throat> uh, but it needs to be administered in a certain way. You know, the Lord's Supper was given by the Lord uh, himself, and after Jesus uh, had ascended into heaven, we see that uh, there was breaking of, of bread and uh, and the Lord's Supper continued. I uh, turn your Bibles, if you will, to Acts chapter 2 real quick. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Verses 41 and 42. <clears throat> it says, Then they that uh, gladly received the word were baptized in the same day, were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayer. Here we see that uh, there was uh, 3,000 that were saved and baptized the same day. And I believe that they administered the Lord's Supper that night. I really do. And uh, after all, how could they administer the Lord's Supper while they were baptizing 3,000? Amen. Think of it. How long would it baptize? take to baptize 3,000 people. That's a long time. You know, they'd have to refill the trough every once in a while. Amen? You know, and uh, what we need to realize is that, um, um, but they, they broke bread after that. And what we need to realize is that they had the Lord's Supper. You know, it does not say um, who administered the Lord's Supper, uh, but we do know that they, uh, um, they did have that. Now, in Acts 20 and verse 7, we see that the, uh, it was the disciples who administered the breaking of the bread. Now, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 35, it says, And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. You know, after Jesus had risen uh, from the dead, he was... Um, on the road of Emmaus, you remember the, the story of how Jesus was on the way to Emmaus, and there was uh, two men. There was uh, Peter and someone else, or John and someone else. They were going. They figured it might have been Peter and John, and they were on their road to Emmaus. They were talking. All of a sudden, Jesus came up behind them, started talking to them, and they started talking all the way to the road on the road to Emmaus. And he he said, "Well, why are you so sad?" And they looked at him and they said, well, didn't you hear what happened? And then they went into how Jesus was crucified and how he was buried and how that they had went to the tomb and they didn't, uh, couldn't find him. And, and so uh, then when they get to Emmaus, he opened their understanding and they realized who he was. Now, there's some interesting things that happened in that. And I want, I want to just take a, a quick look at it. Acts chapter 2 um, if you want to turn there real quick, in verse um, 42, Acts 2.42. I didn't have that one written down, sorry. <clears throat> well, let's see, we just had that one. Hang on a minute. Go to verse 46. Um, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, uh, did eat their meat with gladness and signals of heart. Uh, this you see uh, was at, at Pentecost. 
Now, what we need to realize is when um, Peter and them were there, they broke bread together with Jesus. They broke bread with him in their house, and all of a sudden their eyes were opened. Jesus opened their eyes, and they said, wait a minute, hold it. And he disappeared. He was gone. Now, to me, that would be a little freaky, wouldn't it? All of a sudden, you have three of you there, and you're eating, and one disappears. The Bible says that immediately they went back to Jerusalem. I believe that they high-footed it all the way back to Jerusalem as fast as they could run from Emmaus. And Emmaus was about four miles away. And they ran all the way back there. They got all the way back there, and then they told the disciples what they had seen. <clears throat> you know, I believe the Bible is, clearly states that the breaking of bread was done uh, in and among um, more than one person at a time, or even two people at a time. And um, I see that the Lord's Supper was given, um, was not really given to one person at, the at one time, but it was given in <clears throat> an assembly. But why should we partake in the Lord's Supper? Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Did I have that one down? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 16 to 22. <clears throat> I had a lot of them written down, but I think I missed that one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 16. It says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers <clears throat> of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not to have that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we pro provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? In that passage of scripture, there's an awful lot that it's talking about. Uh, those who sacrifice or worship to other gods, other than the true God, they are of the devil. They're of the devil. They're not of the Lord. And um, they are those who are of the, of the devil are not the ones who are supposed to be partaking in the Lord's Supper. I believe that anyone who's not saved should not partake in the Lord's Supper. And I believe that scripture shows that. There are those <clears throat> uh, not saved. Uh, they've not accepted Christ as their personal Savior. And they should not partake in the Lord's Supper. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, it says, Be ye, are, um, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what Fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness. What communion hath light with darkness? You know, the light that it's talking about are those who are saved, blood-washed, born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if a person is not saved uh, and does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they should not partake of the Lord's table. Um, and people say, well, I don't know why you say that. Why is it you say that they shouldn't partake of the Lord's table? What fellowship have they got with the Lord? Absolutely none. What fellowship do they have with the blood and the body of Christ? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. You know, a person can take and come and take of the Lord's Supper every day of the week. 
even two times a day of the week. It doesn't make any difference. It's not going to get them to heaven. And I want you to understand that right now. The only way a person can get to heaven is by a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that you're a sinner, understanding there's a penalty for your sin, believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, and accepting him as Lord and Savior of your life. Once you do that, you become a child of God, and you are eligible to partake in the Lord's Supper. Now, there was a question asked to me the other night. Um, well, what are the advantages of belonging to a church? The same as belonging to the family of God. Amen? You know, uh, if you're saved, you know, you're on your way to heaven. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. If you're not saved, guess what? You're lost and you're going straight to a very warm place. What we need to realize is that we need to be saved in order to take and partake in the Lord's Supper. A person who's not saved has no idea whatsoever what the instruments of the Lord's Supper represent. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, if you're open there, go back there again to verses 27 and 28. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. You know, <clears throat> what we need to realize is that a person should not come to the Lord's table unworthily. We should have the right attitude we should have the right intentions, and we should not have um, the wrong idea about what this is all about. You know, there's an awful lot of people who feel that, that this is a sacrament and that it will take away your sins. It doesn't do that. We need to self-examine ourselves. A self-examination needs to be done to see if there's any unconfessed sins in us before we come to the Lord's table. We need to see if there's something that, that we have done towards a brother or sister that we haven't taken care of. You know, our hearts and our minds need to be pure on things of the Lord before we come to the Lord's table. You know, notice that it says, a man examine himself. You know, it's not up to the preacher to self-examine you. It's not up to me to say, okay, you dirty, rotten sinner, you can't go to the Lord's table because this or that or something else. It's not, you know, you're, you just aren't worthy. It's not up to me to do that. It's up to you to self-examine yourself to see if you are worthy to come to the Lord's table or not. You know, um, you know if, if there is, um, we need to take in, if we have something against someone or someone else, we need to take and confess that to the Lord before we come to his table. Brother Hughes puts it uh, very well in, in what he says, and sometimes I like using his quote. Um, he says, If the Lord's Supper should be a time where if you have anything against someone else, you need to get it right with God. And you know, that, that puts it in a nutshell. If you have anything against anybody else, you need to get it right with God in, in your self-examination. Well, we saw that when it was started, we saw how that it should be administered. We saw who should partake. But what should our spiritual state be? What should our spiritual state be before we come to the Lord's table? I believe the Bible points out some it quite plainly that a person needs, number one, to be saved. You need to know for sure that you are, are um, on your way to heaven, that you've uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need to know if you were to die right now, um, where you would be, uh, if, that you would be absent from this body and present with the Lord. You know, you need, you, can, you need to remember a time when, you know what, I know when I got saved. I know I'm saved because of this. 
You know, I believe a person needs to be baptized. I do. I believe a person needs to be baptized. Why? Because I believe that a person needs to take and follow the Lord's footsteps. Now, let me ask you something. Was Jesus baptized before the first Lord's Supper? Yes, he was. He was baptized before the first Lord's Supper. What about the disciples? They were all baptized too. We need to, I believe that we need to be baptized before uh, we partake in the Lord's Supper. You know, um, in Acts chapter 16, let's go back to Acts again. We're going to be flipping back and forth here a little bit tonight. Acts chapter 16. Should have kept my Bible open. There we go. Acts chapter 16, verses 30 to 34. It says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, <clears throat> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into the house, they set meat before them, and rejoice, believing in God with all his house. It doesn't say that they had the Lord's Supper there, but I believe they did. I believe that Paul and, and Silas administered the Lord's Supper that night to them. After all, they were saved and they were baptized. It says that, that they uh, gave meat to them, which could have been bread. And what we need to realize is that we need to be saved and we need to be baptized in order to take and partake in the Lord's Supper. You know, <clears throat> what we need to realize is that um, the second thing, well, first we need to be saved and we need to be baptized. The second thing is, I believe that a person needs to self-examine yourself to see if there's some unconfessed sin between you and God. You know, all of us sin every day, don't we? And we, I mean, I can't remember all the sins I commit every day. And when, what I do before I partake in the Lord's Supper, I just ask the Lord, if there's anything between you and I, show me now so that I can confess it, so I can come to your table with a pure heart. And uh, uh, we need to take and confess our sin to the Lord. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all right unrighteousness. What we need to remember is that if we confess our sins, God's going to forgive us. And we need to take and come to the Lord's table uh, with, the, with the right uh, attitude and, and with the right spiritual attitude. But how often should the Lord's Supper be done? You know, and this is something over the 20 years that I've been here that has been the biggest criticism that I have had in all the years I've been here. And I'll never forget when we first started the church, um, we would have the Lord's Supper once a month. The first Sunday of every month, we had the Lord's Supper. You know, bang, every, every, every time. And I had people who were getting saved out of the Catholic Church who wanted me to have the Lord's Supper every week. In fact, they said, if you could have it every service, it would be better. And I... I look at them and I go, well, yeah, that would be great, but it doesn't mean anything if you do it all the time. You know, I want the Lord's Supper to be something that we remember about what it means and why we do it. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, it says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. It does not say how often it needs to be done. All it says is as often as you do it, we need to do it with the right attitude until he comes back. You know, I believe that everything in the church needs to be done decently and in order. And I believe the Lord's Supper needs to be done decently and in order. Just like everything else in the church. The meetings, Sunday school, our church services, everything has to be done decently and in order. And I believe that the Lord's Supper also has to be done that way.
But it doesn't say how often that we need to have the Lord's Supper. I like to have it every month or every other month. Um, now, I know of churches that only have it twice a year. And I know other churches that only have it once a year. It doesn't say how often. It just says as often as ye have it. And um, so, you know, the, the elements of the Lord's Supper have no saving merit whatsoever in them. You know, um, we can partake in the Lord's Supper seven days a week, 365 days a year, and it doesn't get any closer to heaven. Same with baptism. We can go and we can be baptized every single day. And all we are going in is a dry sinner, and all we are coming out is a wet sinner. That's it. And we're not any closer to heaven. We need to have that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if we're not saved, I don't believe a person should partake of the Lord's Supper. If a person is saved, baptized, knows for sure that you're on your way to heaven, believe me, it's one of the most precious times you can have by self-examining yourself and confessing your sins before the Lord. Just saying, Lord, thank you so much for what you did on that cross for my sins. And you know, if it wasn't for him, each and every one of us should be on that cross. We should be where he was for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for your love. I just pray now that as we come to the Lord's table, that we self-examine ourselves, and we just pray, Lord, that we do it with the right attitude. We thank you so much for this message. I pray now that you'll continue to guide and direct us in all that we say and do. We, we love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. I, I just pray, Lord, that you'll help us and guide us in, in all that we do and say. Father, you know that, that we're not worthy to come to your table. All we are is sinners saved by your grace. And we just thank you and we praise you for it. Father, I just pray as we come to your, your table now that you'll take and you'll help us to realize exactly what it is and what it's for. We just thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this time I'm going to have the guys come. Um, Brother Tuck and, and Norm, if you'd come. What's that? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and live stream it? The Bible says, <clears throat> For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for what you did on the cross. And Father, we thank you for your body that you gave for us. And Father, we just pray now that this bread that we're about to partake in, that you would bless it to our body. Father, and we know that we're not worthy to partake in this. However, we know that it's something that you've commanded us to do. And Father, we just thank you so much for what you've done for us. I just pray now that you'll bless this bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, Father, thank you so much for this cup. We thank you for this juice. We just thank you, Lord, for your blood that you shed on the cross. Father, I just pray now that you'll help us to remember what this cup represents. We know without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. Father, we just thank you so much for shedding your precious blood for us, that we can have the assurance of eternal salvation. Father, we have no idea the agony and the pain and the ridicule that you went through. But yet I thank you for bearing my sins. I just pray now that you'll bless this cup and we'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, this cup is the new testament of my blood. This do often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The Bible says that they sang a song and then they went out. Let's all turn our hymnals to number 164. Yeah, let's all stand up, and then we'll be dismissed. 164. <clears throat> the cross upon which Jesus died Is a shelter in which we can hide And its grace so free is sufficient for me and deep as a fountain, as wide as a sea, there's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Father, I want to thank you tonight for all that happened here. We thank you for the opportunity of, of participating in the Lord's Supper and, and coming to your table. We just pray now that as we go our various ways, your grace will be upon each and every one of us. Bring us back to our appointed place on Wednesday, and we'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are dismissed.